Mother's Day is not a day that is on the church calendar. I'm just going to put that out there. And it's, I know that I frustrate my dear wife, who is also a mother, because we look at two different calendars. We see, we see two different days. I, everything that I do and I plan, I plan by the church calendar. Whereas she plans, like most everybody else, by the annual calendar. But I learned in seminary that it's foolish to uh, not discuss mothers on Mother's Day. That's how you get in trouble. And I believe this to be true. And so I would like to talk about mothers. In particular, here at Augustana, we have been blessed uh, with the, the raising of children and having uh, new children come to the font. Today we have with us Cash uh, and uh, Zachary and Samantha, who are the most recent, have the most recent addition to our family. And that family was brought in by water and the word. He was grafted into a tree, as we spoke about. Samantha became a mother as Christ was knitting Cash in the womb. And it's true for anyone. Any mother to know that Christ knits your children in the womb. And that gives a mother a huge responsibility. Mother's Day isn't simply just something that is token. In other words, do not do all mothers celebrate Mother's Day? Or should they celebrate Mother's Day? I would argue that not every mother should celebrate Mother's Day because they're not much of a mother for the rest of the year. Not every mother is a good mother. But there is one. And particularly in our church, where we have such a wide range from young mothers to not-so-young mothers, there's one mother above all that I think that we need to discuss, and she is the oldest of all of us. She is the oldest mother that we know of. And even in the midst of worship, when our children cry out, and when they even get on our nerves, it's by those voices that we know that we are parents. It's by those voices that our mothers hear. The, that our mothers hear the voice of the child and go to them. Or kick you out of bed until you do. They know their voice. And so when we talk about the young mothers and the not so young mothers, and we look at the oldest mother of all here at Augustana, and you're all looking at me like, he's going to get in trouble. And I probably will. We look at her because she's so old that she was there in the Garden of Eden. She's so old that she became necessary after the fall. So old that she watched Jacob wrestling with Jesus. So old and so honorable and so full for us to devote ourselves and our lives to her. A mother who watched the Israelites cross through the sea. Same mother who watched John the Baptist come and proclaim, Behold Christ! We all the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A mother so old that she was carried around in the heart of the Son of God until He was crucified. And when He was crucified, Christ carried her with Him until He was on the cross and until He was pierced in the side. And just like Adam, who was, who was made to fall asleep and from his side was pierced and brought out of him was a rib and was made Eve. And from this, all mothers became mothers. Likewise, 
when Adam, or when Christ, the second Adam, was piercing his side, so came our mother, the church, through blood and through water, whom Christ carried around in him, in his heart, and who poured it out for us. And so, if we truly are the children of Christ, then we understand our mother in this context. That she gives us everything that we, that everything that we need. And nothing that we do not. It is we, sinners, who do not show up for Mother's Day on Sundays. It is we who abuse our mother by saying, well, they won't miss me. It is we who abuse our mother, the church. And if you abuse the church, you abuse Christ. For Christ and the church are one. And so I ask you this. Do you love the church and Christ as you do your own mother? And I'm asking this not hypothetically. I'm asking it practically. Do you love Christ and His bride, the church, our mother, who is also us ourselves? Do you love them as much as your own mother? And all of you are sitting beside your mothers going, I don't know what to say. If I nod my head, she'll see. But that's the beautiful thing about this mother is that when she lays hold of you, it's like, she, it's like uh, when you were young and your mother got after you with a switch. You're not getting away from her. She has you by faith and she holds you. And every time I say she, know that I'm talking about the bride of Jesus Christ himself, who from his own side bore his, his bride. And it is by that, it is by that uh, uh, bride and by that mother of us that we understand what the pen for the sheep look like. And that Christ the shepherd calls us by his voice and that into the pen where the sheep go, Everywhere that has protected us around that sheep pen, we know is the church. That keeps us in safely and securely. Not by any man's works, but by Christ himself. Who has blood for us, who is our lamb. The lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Or in other words... The one who sits on the throne. Salvation belongs unto the Lamb. And all angels were standing around the throne. This is Revelation. And, and all the elders or the pastors uh, and the four living creatures, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom. And thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. How true is this? Mothers are consecrated. Mothers are blessed. Mothers are made. It's not a given. Now you will be a mother. It's not a given that every mother is a good mother. But we know this to be true. The mother that has been given unto us, the church, is also the one who is the bride of Christ. And in there, we know that we shall never escape. Repent. Believe. And point to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The one who from his side poured out water and blood. And that we, in that, in that water we were washed and in that blood we partake. And the entire mother, the church, you and me, cry out. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin 
of the world. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. That is what the, that is what the church says. And so we give thanks to God for all mothers. I give thanks for you. For all of you mothers. In particular, those of you mothers who were unable or do not have children, know this. You still have responsibility. As long as you are members of Augustana and there are children here. You still have responsibility. And in their baptism and in confirmation, you promise that you will help raise and guide these children. You, you made that vow before God and man. And so I ask you and exhort you to do this. As you help all of us raise the children of Augustana, who do you look to for guidance? Make sure it's Christ. And that which flows from his side. Because in that, dear mothers, we can never be taken away. In that sheep pen, we have the forgiveness of sins. Amen.